At a time when economic reforms and liberalization are the passwords for the future, investment banking has assumed tremendous importance in corporate industry and the economy of the country. Dominated by men in the past, investment banking now has a plethora of cash-savvy women in top positions. One such successful woman is Nena Lal Kidwai, India's best-known deal-maker. Okay, so perfect. So, by and large, it looks interesting. Vice Chairperson J.M. Morgan Stanley Nina has been nominated as one of Asia's most powerful business women by Fortune magazine. How did Nina venture into this highly competitive and stressful world of investment banking? I was always fascinated uh, by an office environment. Uh, as a kid, uh, one had uh, slunk into the office uh, to collect father and I used to thoroughly enjoy going into his office. There was a fascination for everything to do with the corporate world, really I think swinging from my exposure to him and therefore some of his friends around him. So I think the fact that I would enter the corporate world was very much in my head and uh, I was fairly good with numbers. Uh, it appeared to be a field which uh, would allow the entry of women, women in banking at the time uh, was something that was beginning to happen uh, elsewhere in the world, a little less in India but also in India. So uh, it seemed like a logical path to choose in the corporate world. So, you know, use a field uh, of finance, banking. And my father, who was essentially in insurance at the time, uh, did guide me in that direction. So I pretty much stayed with it. Even as a child, Nina was highly focused and clear about her goals. She was very close to her father, who was her role model. Well, I think from maybe the time that she was 13 years old or around that, was very clear about what she wanted to do with her life. And she set about achieving it with single-minded determination. So there was no question of compromising. For her, it was going to be you know, an MBA, a career in finance. All that was very clear. And everything she did was geared towards achieving that result. So for her, because she was always a good student, she wouldn't settle for anything less. It wasn't only studies, in fact, no matter what she did. I mean, through school, she played a lot of sports, played for the school, on the school team. She was good at dramatic, debating. Whatever she did, she had that sort of ethos, if you like, for achieving excellence. And she just wouldn't settle for anything other than the best. And I think if she couldn't do it, she just wouldn't do it. I think college, uh, academically, was not very stimulating. Uh, I had now moved to economics for the first time, a subject which I believe I enjoyed. Uh, but the hours were very uh, short, academically speaking, and uh, one could have had, you know, more than half a day really stretching out uh, before one, uh, where one was not necessarily studying or you had whatever little work you had, but whatever you say, college, all the studies tend to happen just bunched up over exams. So it wasn't as full a day as I'd been used to in boarding school. And so I began to actively seek other ways uh, within college of uh, staying busy, which meant uh, getting again involved in debates and elocution contests at uh, both in the college and in the inter-college uh, sort of situation. And then really nearly got drawn into uh, uh, college politics uh, of a sort, which uh, required me to stand for election at the end of my first year. And uh, that happened, I think, less by design uh, more because of uh, the friends one made in the senior years and they decided that uh, they wanted to support my candidature and uh, pretty much uh, force me into it. So that was a whole new experience, you know, standing in college canteens, uh, on the tables, making speeches in Hindi and English and getting booed too, I might add. <laughs> but uh, at the end of it, it was all worth it. After graduation, Nina went to Harvard University for her MBA. She found the experience extremely interesting and enriching. It was a very stressful uh, sort of course. I loved it because it sort of packed the day with a huge amount of activity, just the excitement of being in the States, the excitement of being with a very bright bunch of people, and uh, just the interaction, the interchange one had, the new friends, uh, made for a lot of fun. And I think it's just the way uh, subjects were taught. I think just the nature of education was different. It was much more participative and far less boring. I actually saw the transformation in her in those two years. We were in the same class. 
at that time itself, I knew that uh, she will really make it uh, and she'll go really far. With a string of achievements behind her, Nainu was highly sought out in the international market. There were many lucrative offers that beckoned her, but Nina made a conscious decision to return to India. I was pretty clear I wanted to come back to India, and there was obviously nobody there who was hiring for India. But uh, I did meet with the Citibank crowd who were there and uh, made sure that uh, they knew I wanted to come back to India. And they were really quick. I mean, within the first 10 days, I already had an offer uh, for uh, joining them in India, which is too soon for me, actually because I want to come back and meet uh, all the Indian firms and decide who to join. I did go through the interview process in the States uh, more as a learning experience. I also wanted to know that I could get that job and uh, I had a couple of offers in hand. So I was comfortable with the knowledge that, hey, you know, I could belong to the mainstream here if I wanted. It is a personal choice really that uh, takes me back to India. For Naina, India was where she wanted to be. She sensed that the country was opening up for liberalization, although the real process started in 1991, nine years after she returned. But she was keen to be part of the change in the country she knew best. Nina's interest in investment banking began to get refined as she was finishing her chartered accountancy and then through the Harvard Business School. It's uh, a very creative end of finance. Uh, I'd certainly like to believe it is the most creative end in finance. And essentially what we do is we assist companies, in uh, my case, typically middle to large companies, not so much the smaller companies, in understanding their finance needs and then we don't just stop at being a consultant, we go out and execute on the advice we have given our clients, which is basically raise money for them. Uh, it could be in international markets, could be in domestic markets, could be by way of equity or debt, and also mergers and acquisitions. Uh, should they sell off a division? Should they buy one? If so, at what price? And how most uh, effectively to handle that? <laughs> Investment bankers became essential when both the domestic economy opened up and we stopped insulating ourselves to provide that link with global capital markets, global companies. That was their real function. The role of an investment banker is very important. Uh, worldwide equities are raised uh, trillions of dollars every year and it is all done through investment bankers. There were barely three or four key players in large investment banking in India at the time and Nina joined the largest of them which was Grinley's bank. Thinking of investment bank in those days it was a pretty much a narrow field and it was primarily focused on merchant banking, uh, raising of funds for companies. We didn't have the kind of sophisticated mergers and acquisitions that you see happening. So to opt for that was, I thought, a pretty much a high risk uh, decision for her to take. You chase a deal and you've got to get that deal to make yourself known and heard in the marketplace. After working successfully in the investment banking division at Grinley's, Nina was asked to take on retail banking. Typically, she took up the challenge and made a success of it. Nina was much sought after for her expertise in investment banking. She moved on to join J.M. Morgan Stanley, the leading international investment bankers, as their country head. I certainly felt that from the bank's perspective, it was a huge, huge loss because uh, she was clearly uh, CEO material. But for her, given the fact that she had such a track record in the area of investment banking, and uh, she was joining a name which was uh, a top-notch name in the world, as it were. Uh, a, in terms of timing, it was just right. 
In terms of the area she went into, that was certainly an area of strength for her. So from a point of view of looking at it from a personal perspective, I think it was a right decision. And certainly on a personal basis, I wished her very well. To my mind, Naina has all that uh, skill sets that is required from a banker. Being a woman, I think uh, she stands out even more because this uh, particular community is dominated very heavily by hotshot males. And to that extent, I think a credit must go to her. I'm sure that uh, for subordinates who never worked with other women, uh, it was an issue initially. But within the first few exchanges, you know, you establish the ground on which you deal. And uh, I don't believe it's an issue. And I think in India, we are actually much better off than uh, in a number of Western countries for a very simple reason in that there's a lot of diversity in the workplace. So if you've got an organization which is pretty diverse, like most of the ones I've worked in, uh, as a woman, you were as unique or as similar to everybody else because this wasn't an Anglo-Saxon beer-drinking crowd that went to the same country clubs on Sunday or hung around together on Thursday. Everybody had a very different uh, way uh, of handling both their job and uh, their lives. And in that sense, it makes it much easier for women to step into my mind because you don't have this sort of general band, which is men who think the same and women outside of it. Everybody's just part of uh, that same diverse group. And I think that's a big advantage in our country. I think she epitomizes the uh, youthful uh, you know, sign of our times now. Uh, the whole industry, at least the telecom and IT industry, had uh, become much younger than it was before. And in that sense, she fits that bill. She can relate to the younger executives very well. She can bond very well. And to my mind, she's a great diplomat. She knows the skills of handling clients. So I think that's really where he was coming from. I didn't sense that it was uh, looking for an engagement uh, deeper than that. Nena is a very uh, proper person. She's very correct, uh, ethically, politically. And knowing that we were friends, she saw to it that I never felt pressured to utilize the services of Morgan Stanley uh, simply because she and I went back a long way. She's never hesitated from picking up the phone and making a sales pitch and saying, you really need to do this or need to talk to us. She never thrust herself on to the account management arena. She made sure that I would be dealing with people who I could deal with objectively and not have to worry about the intrusion of a personal relationship. I think uh, you reach a stage in your career where people just meet you for who you are and what you are and whether you contribute or whether you're, if you're man or woman doesn't make the difference. I think. Uh, they will have, as male clients, uh, maybe men who they just don't want to see because they waste their time, and equally women for the same reason. So it really is more to do with uh, professional capability and uh, reputation in the field and rapport. Okay, thanks. Well, it's been easier dealing with her because she comes very straight. Uh, she's honest in her approach. She's forthright in what she feels about things. And when she finds that uh, there is a bit of a stress between the two teams, she handles it very diplomatically. She's the vice chairperson of the company now, uh, and she behaves like that. When you get into the transaction, at that particular stage, if there are key critical meetings, she'd be there. If you're making a presentation of some kind, she would be involved with it. She'd have a look at the presentation before we go into the presentation. She would give her comments on it. We'd make those changes. But it's not that she's going to be telling us what the presentation is going to be all about. But it's a very interesting feature, uh, this phase, the uh, redemption. It was for the only Fortune 500 uh, company in India, that's IOCL. Maybe, you know, she being a woman, and I think that's what we share with her, is that intuition is, you know, which goes into, you know, understanding a person and going forward for closing a deal, that what the other person is thinking. That is something which is, I would say, really gives an edge uh, when you're working. Because uh, many of the deals and a lot of work that happens, it's so personal like it is not just across the table you have to understand a person his psyche his mentality and that is where i think as a woman even she gets an edge
I've never seen anyone work like that in my life. I can't understand how someone can wake up at 5.30, you know, will themselves to get onto a telephone from 6 to 9 in the morning, then leave for work, then come back at 8 and get back onto the phone. It's manic, manic, really serious work. The problem with this kind of a job that Nana has is the, you know, your time is invaded upon. The time between us is, uh, one would like more time, it's not available. But we also manage to travel together on work once like in a while. Not so often, but once in a while, and that's fun. I think we enjoy uh, uh, certain types of holidays uh, to, uh, a lot. And the mountains, uh, going to the jungles, I think these are our two best uh, and shared holidays. And with the kids too, which is great, uh, particularly Kimaya. And uh, so we tend to do most of our holidays uh, to such places. So I think Goa, travel, yeah. Kerala, backwater. Yeah, that's Nansi. true. I, I think the better part of the fun is planning the holidays because more often than not, very often the holidays get cancelled, but it's fun looking forward to the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> she has a great interest in uh, music, uh, but she doesn't get any time to go and listen or watch plays, which she used to be very fond of. But she's fond of, I know, opera or theatre, but uh, I don't know whether she's able to pursue those interests at all. Nina's vast experience will be utilized by various organizations, media, and the government for her ideas, input, and advice, not only in investment banking, but the economy in general. Clearly, uh, with a woman like her who's got all the right credentials, has got what it takes uh, in terms of her own skills and competencies to succeed, she should target uh, nothing less than running the the institution she works for. Uh, the challenges are huge because it is a very political process. We need money, we need international money to come in which would allow for investment in these sectors. I mean, India does not have that amount of capital to secure progress in infrastructure the way we require. And Unless we get our privatizations sorted out, because these are our large companies, these are the companies that are in infrastructure today, we are not going to be able to attract capital on the scale the country requires. If the government wants to get real value out of these jewels that they have created in the past, then that value will come by opening out the investment to the rest of the world. And I think all parties in India, parties of every complexion and hue, if there's one thing they've agreed on today, it is that economic liberalization is a must. From a corporate perspective, this is not just important, it is critical. And investment bankers have a, a huge role to play in an economy going from a developing to a developed mode, going from a restricted to a free mode, which is exactly what India is going through. I believe, in fact, the risk is far larger if uh, we don't privatize, because some of these companies will just have to shut down because they don't get an attract capital. So you end up getting companies that are starved of funding, are not able to grow, and as a result begin to shrink, become less competitive, and finally get into a loss-making situation. And I wouldn't be surprised that if something isn't done very quickly for at least some of these companies, which are in fact in the government domain right now in the public sector, uh, in the next three to five years, we would see some of these companies uh, certainly get into losses and in fact uh, maybe disappear from the map of corporate India. And that unemployment is going to be far more significant than uh, some changing in job profiles as might happen with uh, bringing in private sector or and strategic partners into the business. I think one of the most significant uh, aspects of our new technology wave in India and also the improvement of telecommunications and telecom is going to be how can technology enable 
exactly this, that is improvement of the rural sectors in countries such as India. It's allowing large companies who can put in the systems through technology and telecom to monitor right down at the rural areas what is going on. And if we can affect this, this move of uh, commerce and uh, commercial organizations into the rural areas, again, that would be a very interesting phenomenon to see going forward. Our challenge, of course, is going to be telecommunications and power. I mean, can you work these machines out there? Uh, do we have the VSAT facilities to actually get down to where we need to go? And Nena has far to go. India today is poised for change. Its economy is looking outwards and international investors are looking towards India. And as one of India's leading investment bankers, Nena has a major role to play in its growth. I think in international markets, uh, nobody moves without an investment banker. Whether you want to make an acquisition, whether you want to go for a debt instrument, or you want to go for equity issues, IPO, or second time around, investment bankers are a way of life.